Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and this week we are doing chapters 4 and chapter 5 because I did not do chapter 4 last week like I was supposed to. So here we go. Oh and I also hope that you like my new background. I know it's a couch um, but <laughs> it's a nice couch <laughs> I think and um, I found a place in my house finally where the lighting was just a lot nicer to the camera. So hopefully these videos are better quality. I'm still working on the tech stuff because um, I know like right now my videos are a little on the boring side because I don't have words popping up around me and you know I don't have a little music introduction and stuff like that. I'm still figuring that out, don't worry. I am trying. <laughs> so um, here we go. So chapter four, punningly called, is called The Self. And Uta Hagen basically explains that um, we should know about ourselves so we can act as others. And what she means by that is that acting is you being the most you while you are portraying someone else in a given situation. So, um, so for example, uh, I had this teacher, and this is why I said punningly in the beginning, um, and shout out to uh, Mrs. Self. Um, I owe quite a bit to you. There's some acting things that I still carry with me to this day um, that she has taught me. And uh, I remember that at 14 years old, I was given this role, and basically it was a woman who was proposed to by a man, and then she left. She wasn't leaving him, she was just kind of leaving the life situation, but anyways, so she comes back and she basically wants to ask for him back, right? And um, I could not relate to that character at all. I was like, myself, <laughs> I am 14 years old. <laughs> no one's ever asked me to marry them. And I've never like asked for anyone back. Like I was 14. And so, um, so she goes on to pick out elements of what occurs in this character's timeline that I could relate to. So she asks me, she says, well, she's like, this doesn't have to relate to, you know, um, a partner or something that you've ever asked for back, but could there, is there something in their, in your life that you could not live without? Something where if you left it, if you had to go on a trip and you were going on there for like a year or two, is there something that you would come back for should you have left it there? And I'm thinking, I have a cat <laughs> and so, so she says okay that's good enough you know as long as it locates for you and it relates to you personally you can pick out elements even though you've never you personally have never been in that situation before you can pick out certain elements that that character is going through that locates for you personally um and uh I worked very very hard on that role because there were a lot of I would say I would call them adult elements that kids at 14 years old they don't go through in their lifetime you know at least in their childhood lifetime and um, I was basically a 14 year old girl playing like someone who was around 30 you know so um, it was it was very difficult and when I had asked for her help and she went through the script with me and she was picking out those elements and questioning me and things like that it caused me to reflect on myself and my inner self um, in order to help me bring out an honest and truthful performance. And uh, I really appreciate that, Miss Self. Thank you so much, because I remember getting a really big reaction from the audience at the end of the performance, and it was like, it was really cool. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much chapter four. Um, so just to wrap it up, if you are a beginning actor and you are looking to become a professional actor or to, you know, figure out characters um, that you could, you feel you could never portray, you can, you absolutely can. You just pick out those elements and you understand your inner self because people are different 
everywhere, all day long, at any time, in any situation. Like, I probably have five different faces that I wear just going to work. And five different faces when I'm around my family or my friends or, you know, going out to a bar or something like that. You know, you just given a situation, you can become somebody else, but it's still you. So it's the same thing in acting. If you do that for acting, you are going to give your most honest performance. But you got to know yourself first. I would suggest getting on like a um, like a dating uh, website or something like that, you know, where they have like a million questions about, um, you know, oh, ask her this, ask him that, you know, <laughs> you can you can do those things and write down answers and kind of split your subconscious with your conscious and, you know, write answers about yourself to yourself so that you can kind of get a grasp on who you are as a person and um, hopefully by understanding yourself further you'll see situations when you're reading a script you'll read it on a situation and you'll go oh that's like this you know this that I can actually locate with that's that's gone on in my life or that made me feel this way in my life this is how I would react to this kind of a situation. And then when it happens and you're presently there when you're on set or on stage and you're presently there and the situation happens right in front of you, you have that reaction already there because you know what's going on because you're presently, your present mind is there. Okay, so that's chapter four. And then chapter five chapter five is rather complicated um it's called uh transference so transference kind of goes hand in hand with um with chapter four is the self and um it's kind of basically everything that i have described so far she's got a couple of um She's got a couple of extra things here that I would like to read. Um, let's see. I probably should have written this down. Okay, so she does say this. She says, no one can supply you with personal substitutions. So that's kind of like what I just explained where you would take something out of your own life that caused you to react a certain way or caused you to become a certain way. Um, because if they're just acted out, it looks kind of sticky. And then, you know, people can kind of tell that you're acting like, you know, when you make like a big, huge gesture, like, um, like a surprise, you know, birthday party is being thrown for you, you know, and you go, <gasps> like, that doesn't look real at all, you know? Um, like my body's not integrated into it, you know, it looks like this actor has never been surprised before a day in their life, you know, you can't just go, oh my god, what a surprise, you know, <laughs> just like, it just does not look real. So, um, so she suggests, uh, and well suggested, start to build your own storehouse of transferences and learn to make them an integral part of your homework and rehearsal procedures. That's a big thing. First of all, the homework is finding the inner self coming out into this character. And then second, the rehearsal procedure is to quite literally rehearse um, all of these things that, that cause you to react to those kinds of situations. Whether it's with a line, with an action, um, a little extra emotion, anything like that, all those things are going to line up and you have to, I mean, you can't like, some people can, and it's a gift, <laughs> but you can't like, you can't cry about something without building it first. Cause then it just kind of looks like, oh, this person can cry on cue, you know, then it looks like a cue it doesn't really look 
like you're um, like you're living in that moment. Because when people cry, they first of all, everyone tries to stay strong because they want to be strong for themselves and they want to be strong in that moment and they want to show people that they're strong. And so they will hold back the tears and you know they'll kind of they'll kind of hesitate, you know. And then, you know, then there's that, then there's that wall, there's that breaking point where like, it's just too much to handle sometimes. And just the tears go flowing and you just become vulnerable and you notice that your body changes. And so you'll see the actor's body change when they cry because it kind of contracts a little bit, you know, and it's those kinds of awarenesses. Like when I cry, what do I look like when I you know, what happens to my body? How am I feeling on the inside? What's going through my head? You know, like how long can I keep the tears from not flowing until they actually start flowing, <laughs> you know? And, you know, then you also have to be present and in the moment and you have to know how to control those emotions as well. You have to like, not just turn them on, but you gotta turn them off. You gotta stay focused, you gotta keep your lines straight, you know, um, all those other kinds of things, but they have to come from you. And so, like, I know for example, for me when I cry, man, I am ugly when I cry. I'm like, I like, I do this thing, I'm, I'm like, like I full on pout and my face just scrunches together and it just looks like, it looks like the saddest thing ever. <laughs> Why do I have to look like that when I cry? I can't I can't just look like all the other beautiful actresses when they cry, you know, they're all just like you know, they got the tear rolling and I'm just like you know, just, <laughs> it's so ugly. It's terrible. Anyways, okay, all right, back to business. All right. Here we go. Um so Yeah, that's another good point she makes. She says, uh, complete the transference by finding the behavior. Use the past to make the present real. And of course she means present by currently what's going on in the scene. And you have to make that real because you have to find that thing that locates with inside of you first in order to actually make it real. I remember this one time, um, I was, I was rehearsing for this one particular role and I was shopping and um, I couldn't, you know, cause we were rehearsing, there was no, there were no clothes or shoes or anything like that. And um, I was shopping for something quite odd. It was a coffin as a matter of fact. And I kind of had to like, I had to develop a relationship with the coffin store. Like, was I happy walking in? And I was kind of, you know, where I, where I was in the character's mind, I really had to dig deep on this one. Um, I was, I was more than happy to be there. It was like going to Disneyland and finding like a Minnie Mouse dress. Oh my God. I love Minnie Mouse so much. It's like, it's like that red polka dot one, you know, maybe with some like, some like black ruffled, like little poofy sleeves, you know, kind of short like this one. Oh, so cute. So I had to like pretend that I was seeing something, right? And I, for whatever reason, I could not, I couldn't sell it basically in rehearsals. I was just kind of like looking around, la -dee -da -dee -da. I mean, the energy was just flat. It was so dull and so bad. Um, and so, uh, the writer, as a matter of fact, started asking me questions about where I was and he was like, you need to think about how you're feeling before you walk into the room, enter the stage. Um, and you need to, you need to be looking for something, you know, you go into a store more times than not, and you are looking for something you know, looking for something specific, looking for something that catches your eye, right? So there's an eagerness to it, right, is what I'm getting. So I'm like, okay, so I need to hypen up my energy um, and all this other kind of stuff. So I enter in and I kind of like look around and this time I'm really looking, like I'm not like going, no, I'm really looking around and then I see it and I go, 
like and I like get excited because I am pretending that I see this really cute thing I am going to buy it like it's mine I saw it first <laughs> I'm gonna buy this thing so I I look and I see it and he was like that was the most honest thing I have ever seen you do and I was like oh my god so I kept it because I was using my imagination and I was transferring moments in my head where I remember when I was going into a store I was looking for something to catch my eye and when I find it I'm just like I freak out over it. I don't I'm not a very big materialistic person and man that coffin was pretty <laughs> it was it was um it was it was burgundy but it had like those like light little, little glitter sparkles on it and you know it had some um it had some gems like on the corners of it and it was, oh, it was it was really really pretty i'm almost romanticizing coffins here guys stop me okay so um so yeah so you got to make it uh, really um an honest transference so uh in summation transfers is our part of your homework and during the rehearsal period find identification with all aspects of the characters past and present to substantiate your faith in the time, place, detailed surroundings, and circumstances in which your character will be living and to endow the relationships to the other characters with appropriate realities. Something interesting that she says in there when she says um, your faith. So that is something I believe she's referring to when she refers to the self chapter because you can always act like you like something to impress another person, you know, like to impress your date or to impress your friends or something and go, oh yeah, yeah, I think that's cool, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, you know, <laughs> you know, um, but really, if you took yourself aside, like I said, like with writing those questions down, you know, um, you could really think about it and go, do I really like that? Is that something that I really enjoy? Something I feel easy about? Something that doesn't give me anxiety? You know, things like that. So when she says your faith, um, it's you believing that 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 the situation at hand is really how you would react, how you the person would react in that kind of a given situation. So I just wanted to touch up on that one. Um, the second purpose deals with the discovery of the character's behavior, justifying it while alerting you to every circumstance, to every animate and inanimate object that stimulates you to act, to do something consequential about what you feel and want. It is the character's actions which will reveal the new you. Um, so when she says the new you, she's referring to the character that you're playing but it's you playing the character not the character playing you if that makes sense so there's two yous stick them together um so that's pretty much it for chapter five um so it's understanding you and then it's transferring the new you into the character given the situation now of course there are things to be considered when you are researching a character. Um, you have time, you have place, you have uh, circumstances like how the person grew up, who the person grew up with. Um, I'm not sure if I said how, how the person grew up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things. Um, to research as far as a as a character is concerned so you've got to you've got to as an actor you've got to be able to balance your the research that you have for this character as well as your imagination that's going to allow you to bring the inner you into this character and then slap it together like an amazing acting sandwich and that's it um, so I hope that this video finds you well and hopefully opens your eyes a little bit um, to uh, acting. So I will see you guys next time and I think chapter 6, 
I can't remember what chapter six is called, but that's okay. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.